Hello. So you probably watch the PV, right? And you're probably thinking what I am thinking. Yeah, I, you are. You are. Uh, Isolde is going to make Spathodia insane. Now, I know this sounds like a broken record because every new character or someone else becomes insane. When Chu came out, 37 is insane, which was true. And I think this is the time for Spathodia. So Spathodia mains, rejoice, because uh, I think it's uh, this, might, this must be, it might be the time where Spathodia skyrockets in terms of damage because she's already, she's already doing a lot of damage, right? So the problem was that it was hard to keep up the burn, right? To keep the burn up above 15 stacks. What what does that mean? It means that, what if you remember a couple of videos, uh, like in the past that I made about it, uh, I didn't like burn, right? Because burn, it was, it was hard to, to maintain. Every time burn ticks, let's say, it, it loses 50% of their stacks, which means that if you have 20 burn stacks, and it ticks, like on the next turn, it ticks, it goes from 20 to 10. So for characters such as Patodia that require a certain amount of burn, uh, above a certain amount of, of burn to trigger extra mechanics, it was hard to do, right? You had to do a big setup, use a lot of cards, stay still, don't do any damage until you are ready to go, and then nuke, right? Now, with the introduction of Isolde, and we're going to check her kit in just a second, I think it's going to be way easier to apply burn. On top of that, we're also going to get a number of debuffs and power-ups and buffs from Isolde. So, Spazodia alone is already pretty strong, without even uh, catering towards the burn, the 15 stacks of burn, but with Isolde, it's going to be crazy, and I'm not I'm not clickbaiting. It is going to be crazy. Uh, so let's go ahead and check her kit. First of all, for some reason, they start with Insight. It's kind of weird, but it's sure. So Insight, one, two, three. She basically switches between stances, let's say. It's like the Divination, but it, it's not random. Like uh, Kanjira, it's like every turn. It's not that way. It's uh, determined by certain aspects, right? So first of all, when starting combat, enters Overture, which is the first stance, Inflicts burn on all enemies when starting. When the enemy with the highest layer of burn loses layer, so like the next turn, or you trigger it somehow, uh, inflict the same number of heat. Heat is a buff on Isolde. When a certain number of heat is reached, enter interlude. Interlude is the second stage of her whole act, right? Now, I2, when entering combat, increase attack. It's probably going to be an 8%. Uh, I3, when heat, which is the buff, reaches a certain number, I don't, we don't know what it is, interlude turns into finale. Now, let's go back for a second. When an enemy with the highest layer of burn loses layers of burn, inflict the same number of heat. Now, we know that the burn loses 50% of the stack. So if you have a big amount of stacks, you're going to lose a big, a big amount of burn, which looks like is going, is going to com, com, uh, convert one, one to one into heat. So it, must, it, it, it should be pretty easy to go into interlude. Like almost, almost turn two, almost turn two, because you, if you also add more burn from other means, you will probably be able to enter interlude immediately on turn two. Let's go ahead and check what interlude is. When when in this state gives all allies pre ignition, so does over overture. Pre ignition is a is a buff, which means that when that character. All allies. So when that character is going to attack, it's going to flick, afflict one stack of burn, right? So she gives pre-ignition in Overture, then she gets into Interlude, gives still pre-ignition, and on top of pre-ignition also gives in Interlude a certain number of burn. Uh, when a certain number of burn is reached on the enemies, casts Intermezzo once on, to all enemies. Uh, so once in Interlude state, she... After a certain burn is reached, she casts a reality group attack and the damage is scaled with the number of burn layers. So it has to do with burn, right? So then, I3, when heat reaches a certain number, 
interlude turns into finale. We don't know the number, but I don't think it's going to be that hard to reach because, again, losing 50%, that's a lot. So the, mo the more you apply, the more big the stack, the more is the stack is going to lose, the more stay, uh, stacks of heat you're going to get, the easier it's going to be to, to go from overture, overture to interlude to finale, right? In finale stance, when in this state, gives all allies pre-ignition. Again, when a certain number of burn is reached on the enemy, cast intermezzo. Again, once to all enemies. When casting intermezzo, increasing addition might. So this uh, free attack is going to be powered up by finale, right? I don't know. I think it's going to be, it might be big. It might be a big in condition might increase because it's uh, it's I3. So, but we'll see. Pre-ignition, as I said, consume all layer of what this buff when attacking. Each layer will give one burn. So you will get a lot of pre-ignition. I don't know how much pre-ignition is this. It just says that it applies it. It might be one stack. It might be two, maybe three. If it's more than one, it's going to be really, really good because you're going to be stacking a lot of pre-ignition on characters that don't do anything, right? So let's say let's say you're playing Tooth Fairy. Let's say you're playing any healer that has like, one, an attack on the monsters, right? You're going to deal any damage on the monster. You use that card, whatever that might be, and you apply your pre-ignition, which have been stacking for a lot of time because you didn't have to heal, right? And you were like prioritizing Spot of the Eye and sold it. So that's going to help burn a ton, burn-related character a ton. So this is going to be really, really, really good. Now, let's go ahead and check the skills. First of all, skill one, it's a mass attack. It's called the Swirling Humming for now. Mass attack inflicts reality damage to two enemies and burn. When under, in, when under interlude, increase penetration rate. While under finale, further increase penetration rate. So while progressing through the stages of uh, the act, if you are into finale, which is probably going to be turn three, maybe turn two, turn three, depending on uh, your party setup, you're going to be doing a lot of penetration rate. I don't know if this is going to be the same tier, of the same the same the same tier of penetration as uh choose ult that goes to 100 percent if you have six or more wines probably not gonna be that crazy because it's just a skill it might be maybe like 20 or 30 percent which is still pretty good it deals damage and apl apl applies burn to to enemies that's that it looks like that now Skill 2, Freedom of Will, Mass Debuff, Increased Critical Decrease, Critical Defense, and Reality Defense. If the target has Burn, increase the effect of Reality Defense Debuff. So it's going to debuff, apply two debuff, as you can see here, and it's going to be a critical death, so that it's easier to crit, I believe, or it's, it's it, you do more critical damage. I think it's easier to crit. Critical death and Reality Death. And the, the Reality Death itself is going to be heavier the debuff, if they they have any stack of burn. It doesn't say if they have to have that certain threshold. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's just like one. Increase the effect of reality death, the death debuff, which is always almost always going to be the case unless a minion dies and a new one comes in and doesn't have any debuffs, right? Now, this is the ultimate. The ultimate is pretty crazy. So it's a must until blood flows the throat, which is uh, what she yells when uh, when you're playing her. She says, nice. which means like you're choking on blood. Which is um, uh, opera Tosca from uh, the lore of the character, right? Mass debuff inflicts burn on main target and inflicts burn on other targets as well. So it's probably going to be more on the main and less on the others, but still like burning everybody. Gives rousing morale to all allies, not turn-based, it's just a stack. Casts intermezzo, which is the free, free attack, and said attacks incantation might will increase based on the number of overflowing burn on the main target. Now, this probably means that it's going to be like Spatodia's uh, case, it's going to be a threshold, and if you have more than threshold, it's going to consider it by, uh, as overflowing, and you're going to have more, you're going to deal more damage for from intermezzo if you are uh, above a certain number, okay? Hopefully it's not 15 again, but I think 15 is still going to be fine at this point because all of the burn, all of the pre-ignition given to everybody, right? And rousing morale is the damage bonus plus 50%, which is pretty good that it's a stack. It's probably always going to be a stack, but uh, I was kind of worried that it was that it would fall off. So you can technically still like hold it with some characters and like do it whenever you want. So maybe if you're still setting up something, if you need one more buff, 
for Spatodia before you do it, you can wait one more turn. It's not going to go away. It's just a stack, right? So you can time it correctly. Uh, so yeah, so overall, overall, the character looks really solid. I really like it. I am probably going to pull for it on my main account on my normal account, because I have Spatodia, right? And I would like, I would love to use her. I still use her, and she's still good at, without Ulu, right? So we don't need Ulu anymore. Uh, thank God, Hugh, right? Because you don't need extra characters that fill slots, right? So the, what are you going to do that, at that point? Right? It's going to be annoying. So thank God for Isolde. Uh, she just looks like she's going to be really strong. Eventually, we'll have the numbers, so we're going we're, we're gonna to go over uh, the character a little more in the future when we have the actual numbers when the patch is about to begin right we're going to go over as well on twitch so if you want to know more or have anything else to ask about the character come to my stream at twitch.tv forward slash jagazine today if you're watching this video i'll be live so be sure to turn in we're going to do u2 and talk about these characters as well and uh, speculate on what marcus marcus uh, might be and how to use this all the probably right so thank you for watching and see you next time